Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will learn about problem solving using unit conversions. Our learning goal is using conversion factors that we've learned in a previous video to change from one unit to another. So the process of problem solving in chemistry often requires one or more conversion factors to change a given unit to the needed unit. Problem solving in chemistry requires identification of the given quantity units, determination of the units needed, identification of conversion factors that connect the given and needed units. And so throughout this video and in future videos, you will see me consistently identifying the given amounts in a word problem. I also will identify what's needed to be solved. And then we'll also write down the conversion factors needed to connect the given to the need. And if you follow this method to problem solving, it takes the guesswork out of setting up any word problem. And in fact, even when I was doing research in graduate school, I would consistently use this method so that I knew I did my calculations correctly. This is a core chemistry skill of using conversion factors, but I imagine you can apply this to many of the classes that you're taking. So once again, the steps to problem solving using conversion factors, we will first write down the given and needed quantities. We will then write a plan to convert the given unit to the needed unit. We will look up equalities, and write conversion factors that are needed to solve the problem. And then we will set up the problem to cancel units and calculate the final answer. So let's do an example. If a person weighs 164 pounds, what is the body mass in kilograms? So let's first write down our given. So pounds is a mass unit. So I'm gonna say mass is equal to 164 pounds. And it's asking me, what is the body mass in kilograms? So I still need mass, but I need it in units of kilograms. And so in a previous video, we discussed converting from the English US system to the metric system. And we will need to look up that equality and when we do, we would see that one kilogram, so I'm gonna write down some information on the side here, one kilogram is equal to 2.20 pounds. So that's the equality. And when we have an equality, remember we can write two conversion factors. So we could write one kilogram over 2.20 pounds or 2.20 pounds over one kilogram. And I encourage you to do this with any word problem to write down both conversion factors and so that you can choose the correct one to cancel out units. So then our next step is to start our dimensional analysis. And so I like to think of dimensional analysis as a ladder. It's horizontal. And so I have a long line and anything on top 
is going to be the numerator. Anything on the bottom will be the denominator. And my goal is to choose the correct conversion factors to cancel out units from the given in order to get me to units that I need to find. So for example, my units are currently in pounds. And if I plugged in one kilogram over 2.2 pounds, I can see that pounds cancels out and my units are in kilograms. If I had chosen 2.2 pounds in the numerator and one kilogram in the denominator, the kilogram would not be able to cancel out with the pounds. And so in this case here, this conversion factor was needed to solve the problem. Now remember that 2.2 pounds is treated as an exact number for this particular equality. So we're limited to the significant figures of our measurement, which is 164. A lot of times in a different color, I like to write down the number of sig figs in the measurements in the given. And of many problems that you'll be working are oftentimes multiplication and division. And so we just report the answer to the fewest sig figs. So we will report it to three significant figures. Now, the way to plug this into your calculator is you will type in 164 divided by 2.2. So you're dividing by 2.2. We don't necessarily need to multiply by one because that will still give us the same answer. So I plugged in 164 divided by 2.2, and my answer is 74.545 repeating in kilograms. However, remember, we're going to report to three significant figures, so that's to this place here. And the number next to that five is four, so we're not going to round up. And so our final answer is 74.5 kilograms. And that's our final answer. So the mass that is 164 pounds is equal to 74.5 kilograms. All right, let's do another example. A rattlesnake is 2.44 meters long. How many centimeters long is the snake? All right, so don't skip this step. Write down your given and your need. This will be very helpful. Good habits to develop when problems get a little bit longer, and especially when we start bringing in some chemistry. So always write down your given. It says the length of the rattlesnake. So I'm gonna do L for length is 2.44 meters. And I need the length of the snake in centimeters. And so I'm recognizing that I'm in the metric system. I'm just converting from meters to centimeters. And in a previous video, we worked through that. Um, how many centimeters are in a meter, um, just based on these prefixes. And so in a different color pen, I'll write some notes to myself down. So I remember that there are 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. Once you write that equality, go ahead and write down the two possible conversion factors. And then you start your dimensional analysis. Remember, that's just the ladder. So go ahead and draw a long line. And then we'll draw a line here. You always start with your given data. That's a single unit. There's only one unit. We only have one piece of given data. So that is easy. 
to identify. That's the first thing that goes in this dimensional analysis. And then we have to choose the first or second conversion factor in order to cancel out meters and give us centimeters. Which one would you choose? Excellent. Hopefully you all said the first one. So let's highlight that one there. That's the one we will use. And 100 centimeters in the numerator over one meter. And we did that so that meters cancels out. And our answer needs to be in centimeters, and it is. Remember that these are considered exact numbers because you're converting within the same system, the metric system. And this one here is in three significant figures. So my final answer, since this is multiplication, 2.44 times 100 should be three sig figs. And it is three significant figures, and that's the final answer, 244 centimeters. So we're using these units to cancel out so that we are confident in how we're setting up the problem. And for this course, that's primarily what we will be doing. We won't be using as much algebra where you're maybe rearranging equations, solving for variables. I'm gonna use dimensional analysis and I have found in my experience of teaching for a number of years that students really like dimensional analysis because then they are confident in the way they solve their problems. So what happens when you have two or more conversion factors needed? This is often the case, especially when we start doing what's called stoichiometry later on with chemical reactions. We'll need more than one conversion factor. In setting up these problems, one factor follows the other. So once again, just follow the units. Don't let that overwhelm you. We're gonna use the units to guide our way. And each factor is arranged to cancel the preceding unit until the needed unit is obtained. So you're just trying to cancel out units every single time. So let's do an example. A doctor's order prescribed a dosage of 0 0.150 milligrams of Synthroid. If tablets contain 75 micrograms of Synthroid, how many tablets are required to provide the prescribed medication? So the first thing is always write down your given. Kind of pick out the data. I see that the doctor has prescribed 0 0.150 milligrams of Synthroid. So I'm gonna write down mass is equal to 0 0.150 milligrams. And I'm gonna abbreviate Synthroid as medicine. So just medication. Now the second sentence here is a little bit trickier because like in a previous video, it contains an equality. So remember some equalities are not something you can look up in a table, but they may be embedded within the actual word problem itself. So it says, if tablets contain 75 micrograms of Synthroid, of the medication, tablets is a unit, micrograms is a unit. So when we have two units that are related to each other, then that is inequality. So we have one tablet is equal to 75 micrograms. And I'm gonna use the Greek symbol mu there for micro rather than MC. So 75 micrograms of medication. It's also crucial that you identify substances that you're working with. Later on, when we do chemical reactions, we will be dealing with you know, two different types of masses of you know, maybe a, you know, an element in a compound. And you wanna be able to differentiate the two because you gotta, when you cancel out units, you wanna make sure you're canceling out the correct unit. So like I said, develop good habits now, write down your units, write down the identity of the substances you're working with, 
Um, and this will save you time and will also prevent you from making mistakes. So the question is, how many tablets are required to provide the prescribed medication? So that's your need. So we need to solve for the number of tablets. That's our goal for the prescribed medication. And a lot of times when you have multiple conversion factors, writing down these units will be also very helpful. For example, I know that my final units needs to be in tablets and I have an equality over here that has that unit in it. And that's a clue to save this equality for the end because I wanna end up in units of tablets. I don't wanna start with this one. Um, I wanna end with it because I wanna end in those units. So that's always kind of a nice clue when you're writing down these units. If you have multiple conversion factors. Another thing to recognize, I'm gonna write in a different color pen my notes. This is step two, that plan of attack. I'm gonna write the conversion factors for that equality that's embedded within the problem. So one tablet over 75 micrograms of medicine or 75 micrograms of medicine over one tablet. Another thing that might be useful is to also use kind of color coding like you see me doing here. So I see micrograms of medicine. Okay, that's there. I also see something very similar to that using, you know, using my color coding pen, I see mass of medicine here, right? Micrograms of medicine, but milligrams of medicine. So these aren't necessarily exactly the same. So that means I need to look up an equality that helps me convert from milligrams to micrograms or vice versa. And when you look up the equality, you will find that one milligram is equal to 1000 micrograms. And so if we write the two conversion factors, one milligram over 1000 micrograms or 1000 micrograms over one milligram. So it looks like we have our plan of attack. We have some conversion factors to choose from based on the word problem. And then also just converting between two metric system units. And now let's start our dimensional analysis. So we're gonna start our ladder, draw a long horizontal line. And the first number I'm gonna put in. So in this problem, we have two pieces of given data, but the rule of thumb is to generally start with a given data that has a single unit. So mass of 0 0.150 milligrams, that's only one unit. So we're gonna start with that value, not the, this value because there's two different units. So always start with the one with the single unit. That's a good rule of thumb. More often than not, that is always the case. And write down the full units and identity of the substance and then draw another line. And then it's like, okay, I'm in milligrams of medicine. Eventually I wanna to get to tablets, but what do I need to do first? I need to convert from milligrams to, excellent, to micrograms, because that's in that conversion factor here. And which conversion factor would you use? Would you use the first or second? That's right, you would use the second one because then the milligrams cancels out. So let's go ahead and write 1000 micrograms. And I'm actually gonna write medication, the meds there, over one milligram of medicine. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel out the units milligrams of medicine cancel out and we're in micrograms of medicine. 
but I don't want to be in micrograms of medicine. I want to be in the number of tablets. So which conversion factor would you use? The first or the second one? Good. You're going to use the first one because that will give you your units that you're looking for. Tablet on top. And it will allow us to cancel out micrograms of medicine on the bottom. I always like to cancel the units out. And then I know I'm left with the correct unit, the one I'm looking for, which is going to be in tablet. And when I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to do 0.15 times 1,000. And I like to, I have, a, I have a graphing calculator, so I like to press enter after each like vertical line. So I did that times that, and I press enter, get 150. And then I'm going to divide by 75. Divide by 75. You don't need to worry about the ones because that just keeps the number the same. So I divide by 75 and I got my answer to be two tablets. And that's the final answer, two tablets. which ends up being an exact number, right? So, which is good. <laughs> so we're gonna give our patient two tablets. All right. How many minutes are in 1.4 days? So you can go ahead and pause the video, try this on your own, mimic what we've been doing already by writing your given, your need, your plan with any conversion factors that are needed, and then set up your dimensional analysis and then check your work with me. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead, let's write down our given. It says, how many minutes are in 1.4 days? So it looks like we're measuring time. So T is equal to 1.4 days. And we need time in minutes. <clears throat> and so when we need time in minutes, um, then I'm going to write some equalities that I know that are going to help us out in some conversion factors. I know that there are 24 hours in one day. I'm gonna write my conversion factors. I also know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So I'm gonna write that down, that conversion factor as well. It looks like I have what I need. Um, once again, it may be useful to highlight your final units. Like I want to be in minutes. I see that this particular conversion factors would give me those units. So I'm gonna save that conversion factor for the end. I'm gonna start my dimensional analysis, draw the long horizontal line of your ladder, write down your given. There's only one piece of data there, so that's, Makes our lives easier. You don't have to choose anything there. And which conversion factor did you choose? 24 hours over one day or one day over 24 hours? Good, hopefully you chose this one so that day cancels out. So 24 hours in one day. The second one, which one did you choose? Good, 60 minutes over one hour. I'm going to cancel out units just to check our work. And then we are in units of, I want to make sure I highlight this too. We are in units of minutes. So we are good to go here. That's what we wanted. And when I plug this into my calculator, 
I do 1.4 times 24 times 60 and I get 2016 minutes. Now, technically our measurement was in two significant figures. And so we need to round to this place here. And so an easy way to do that is to write the final answer in scientific notation. So to write 2.0 times 10 to the third minute. Because remember, the coefficient of scientific notation, all numbers are significant. So that's why it's easier. Because if you were to round this, it would just been 2,000 and you would end up with one sig fig. But if you wanted to indicate two sig figs, like we needed to in this problem, just write your answer in scientific notation. So that's the trick to getting to the correct number of sig figs. If your pace on a treadmill is 65 meters per minute, how many minutes will it take you to walk a distance of 7.5 kilometers? Once again, I highly recommend that you pause the video, try it on your own first, and then check your work with me. All right, let's write our given. We are given that our pace on our treadmill is 65 meters per minute. So that in of itself is a conversion factor per minute, or we could write one minute over 65 meters. And then once again, you could write that actually as an equality, 65 meters is equal to one minute. So that's all the provided data. How many minutes will it take you to walk a distance? So my distance is equal to 7.5 kilometers. And it says how many minutes? So we need the time, time in minutes. I already noticed in my given, I have minutes here. I want it in minutes. I'm gonna save that conversion factor for later. I'm gonna start my dimensional analysis with the unit or the data that's a single unit, that kilometers. But what I notice is like, okay, this isn't kilometers, but this equality, which I'll, this a conversion factor, which I'll need later is in meters. So I know I need to convert from kilometers to meters. So we would need to look up that equality and we would see that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. And I'm gonna write those conversion factors so I can choose which one's best for this problem. All right, I think we're ready to go here. Start your dimensional analysis, draw a long horizontal line. Start with the data that's a single unit. And in this case, that's 7.5 kilometers. And what conversion factor are you gonna use first? A thousand meters over one kilometer. So that kilometers cancels out. And then once we're in meters, what's the next conversion factor? Good, one minute over 65 meters because we can see that our units will cancel out. So that was the correct conversion factor to use because we wanted our answer to be in minutes. That leaves minutes up on top in the numerator. And when we solve for that problem, we would type in 7.5 times 1,000 divided by, so I press enter and then I divide by 65 and I get, 115 minutes on my calculator. However, I noticed the measurements are in two significant figures. So remember, report to the view is sig figs. So I would report to this digit here. The number next to it is five. So I will need to round up 
And so there's 100 and, and I need that zero at the end there as a placeholder to say that's 120 minutes rather than 12 minutes, right? That zero at the end there, even though it's not significant is a placeholder to indicate how large this number is. 120 minutes. So I wanted to relate this to an application um, in the medical field called toxicology. Um, and the basic concept of toxicology was actually developed by a Swiss physician, Paracelsus. Celsus. Um, and basically he developed the dose or defined that the dose is the difference between a poisoned and a cure, like knowing the correct dosage of medication to evaluate the level of danger from various substances, either natural or synthetic, a risk assessment is made by exposing laboratory animals to the substances and monitoring their health effects. One measure of toxicity is called the LD50 or lethal dose, which is the concentration of the substance that causes death in 50% of the test animals. So for example, the LD50 of caffeine is 192 milligrams per kilogram. And that means milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body mass. Uh, LD50 can also be given in units of micrograms per kilogram. Other evaluations are made, but we often in the field compare LD50 values. And so you can see some LD50 values for different substances that have been tested in rats, anywhere from table sugar, caffeine, to sodium cyanide. And so as you can see here, the most lethal one on this table is, is parathion, a pesticide which has an LD50 of three milligrams of that pesticide per one kilogram of body mass. And so that would be considered something very toxic. All right, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please email me.